the first thing we'll look at here is this lower left bay. And the first thing we need to do when adding in our vertical braces is add some different construction lines in here so we have some good points to pick from. So when we're adding in vertical braces, the points that we're going to pick from is our half nominal depth of our beam and the center line of our column. So the first construction line that we need to get in our model is the half nominal depth of this beam. So this beam is a UB457. So the full depth is 457 millimeters. If we divide that by two, we get 228.5 millimeters, so we need to add a construction line along that beam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my layout page in my layout section, and I'm going to click on construction line add. And then using my base construction line snap, I'm just going to click on the top of this beam, and I'm going to add from that. So that's at the very top of that beam. We need to go down. 228.5 millimeters, so I'm going to specify that number, 228.5, and since we're going down, we need to hit the add minus, and then that gives us our half nominal depth of that beam. And then what we can do here is we can get our other line construction lines in that are going across. So what we can do there is we can go to our add construction line again. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use my intersection of construction line. And since we have one up here, the other point that we need to be able to pick is the center line of this column. So our grid line A is at the center line. And now that we have the construction line at our half nominal depth of the beam, I can go ahead and pick this point here. And then our vertical brace is going to be running all the way from that point, and our second point is going to be at the center line of this column on grid line B. So I'm going to pick this point here for my second point. So now we have a infinite construction line going across that point, and then I'm going to do the same running the other way. So I'm going to come up here to my grid line B and the half nominal depth of the beam, pick that for my first point, and then I'm going to go to the center line of the column on A, and then pick the bottom of that base plate or the bottom of that column to get my other construction line in there. And now we're set up to be able to pick some good points for our vertical braces within that bay. Now the other thing I'm going to do since we're already adding in construction lines is I'm going to go ahead and focus on the bay from B to C. And what we have there is two vertical braces where they kind of meet in the middle up here under this beam. So we will be going to the half nominal depth point of that beam and the center line of the columns as well. Really the only construction line we need here is the halfway point between B and C. So if we refer to our sheets, we can see that the distance between B and C is 7,620 millimeters. If we divide that in half, we get 3,810 millimeters. So we can specify a construction line there now. So I'm going to go to my construction line add tool again. And I'm going to use my base construction line for my snap. And I will base this off of grid line B. And we decided that we're going 3,810 millimeters. And that will be in the positive direction. So I can come here and I can just hit add. And now we have a construction line that is directly in the center between B and C. So when we draw those vertical braces in for member lines, they're going to go from the center line of this column to the half nominal depth of this beam directly in the center. So now we're set up to be able to input our braces in. We can go ahead and start doing that now. So I'm, gonna, I'm still in my add construction line command. I'm going to right click out of that. And the next thing we can do is we can go to our members page under the steel section and we can drop this tool drawer down again. And in here we have an add vertical brace. 
once we get in the add vertical brace, we see the familiar member add options bar that we're used to seeing. We've seen it for columns and our beams. So if we look at that sheet S3, we can see that in our first bay here from between A and B, our section size is called out as an ISA 100 by 100 by 8. So this will be an angle. And what I can do here is I can just specify my different section size. So I need to find the 100 by 100 by 8. That's this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And because it's an angle, we have a few different options here that we can specify. So this first one is going to let us specify which side of the gusset we're on, if that's on the far side or the near side. So if I drop that down, I can choose between the two options there. And then also this next one over is if we wanted to have a double or single material. In this case, we just have a single material, but if I click this, it'll change to a double material. So that's what that icon looks like. And then also, if you notice, we have some different options if it's set to double material. So we have some different configurations that we can set it to. If I drop this down, we have a back-to-back -back configuration. We have a star configuration and then far side and near side is what you can specify there. I'm going to go ahead and click this again so we, we know that we're on single material. And then this is if you want the angle leg turned up or down. These are still the same as what you saw for beams and columns. This is your left end connection type and your right end connection type. So if you wanted to specify something different here and then you can specify your, your or you, you have the ability to lock in your uh, different elevations here as well as your continuous add mode and your launch member edit buttons. What I'm going to do for right now is I'm just going to leave everything set to what it is. I'm going to make sure that this is set to the far side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just locate my points. So the snap that we'll want to be using is our intersection of construction lines since we have our construction lines set up. And then like I said before we want to do for our first point we want to pick the half nominal depth of the beam and the center line of the column. So this is the, this is the point that we have set up. So I'm going to go ahead and left click there for my first point. And then we're just going to the center line of the column at the very bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and locate here for my second point. And you can see we have a vertical brace in there. And then for this second vertical brace that we have going in the upwards direction, the only thing I'm going to do, it's the same section size, I'm going to come down or come up here to the side of gusset. And instead of that being on the far side, I'm going to change that to the near side. And it gives you a little preview there. So because we can see the angle, it's showing us that that is on the near side. It's closest to us. What I'm going to do is pick the same points. So I have construction lines set up. I'm going to pick the center line of this column at the very bottom there for my first point. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick the point that we have set up for us here at the half nominal depth of that beam and the center line of this column here. So I'm going to click there for my left point, for my second point, excuse me. And now we can see we have both of our vertical braces input in to our first bay here. So before we move on to the second bay, I'm just going to right click out of that vertical brace command. I'm going to turn to solids. And then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to kind of zoom around or rotate around to, sh to show you what we have input in here. So the reason this works is because our angles, if you can see that, are back to back. And the way that we did that is through our member add options bar by specifying which we wanted on the far side and which we wanted on the near side. So those member, those two member lines, they don't interfere just by simply specifying which side of the gusset they were on. So this front one is closest to us and this back one you can see is on the back side of the gusset. So they don't interfere with each other, they're able to pass through and be put back to back. So what I'm going to do since I rotated around, I'm going to open my view again and I'm going to open number three. And now that I'm back in this view, we can go ahead and move on to our middle bay here. So looking at sheet S3, we have a vertical brace going from B 
to the middle of the beam here and then from C column C to the middle and they kind of they kind of meet in the middle here so what we can do since we got good points to pick from is we can go ahead go ahead and get into our member add vertical brace and we can specify our different section size so what we got here instead of angles is an RHS 96 by 48 by 4.8 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that. So that's this one down here. Hit say OK. And then we're going to be picking the same points as we did for our other vertical braces. Being that this is a different material type, what we'll need to do is we'll need to come up here and specify what our long side is going to be. We want this to be vertical. And then we don't have any other options to specify up here since it's not an angle or a channel and then we want to just keep our left side and our left end and right end connections on auto standard and I'm not going to worry about the continuous add mode or our launch member edit so once we have our section side specified and our long side set to vertical we can go in here and pick our points so I'm going to pick down here the center line of this column and then I'm going to come up to our construction line that's running through the middle of the brace and the half nominal depth of the beam. So I'm going to locate my second point there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other brace. I can pick this as my first point if I want to. I'm going to come down here to the center line of this column, pick that for my second point. And now when I zoom out, you'll notice that because these two member lines are touching the same point and are within a certain distance the system automatically creates a shared gusset plate between the two vertical brace members so if I right click out of the add vertical brace command I'll turn to solid and now we can see that if I zoom in here and rotate around both of these vertical braces are connected to the same shared gusset plate and then they make their own connections to each of the columns using their own gusset plate.